Hi, Peter Letterman again with Soundsmith, and this video is pertaining to stylus shape. And this is a, um, a subject that is interesting, and it has some uh, intricacies to it which are really great to talk about and great to think about, because with an analog playback system, specifically a stylus groove system, many things are compromises. So for the best performance, you take the best compromises. It is not a perfect system, like digital it is not a perfect system. So you have to understand what you're doing in order to get the best results. So let's talk initially about what the problem is. So the problem is that um, if I hold this photo up, and hopefully you can see it, you can get an idea of what the challenge is. Um, I'm going to later do a video about the um, difficulty of tracing uh, the stylus groove itself under any conditions for any phono cartridge because the laws of physics are pretty much unavoidable and what you have is a gigantic amount of mass hooked up to this tiny little point being pushed around by these tiny little modulations. In principle it shouldn't work so we'll talk about that some other time but just want you to understand what we're dealing with. So there are many different stylus shapes and to just talk basically about some of the simpler ones over on this side you can see a conical stylus and here you can see a fine line stylus and it's pretty clear that one of them has much less contact area on the diamond and the groove wall than the fine line or contact line diamond. What does this mean? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, these are some of the very common stylus shapes and types. So we'll do this here. So you have a conical, you have an elliptical, uh, you have a line contact. And in between the two, there's something called a hyperelliptical. It's a shape that I'm um, pretty much in favor of. It's a, it's a great shape. Um, and of course, you have this famous microline, which is not done very much anymore. The Shure used a microline, and there are a number of styli on the market that still use a microline. The microline was great. I'll talk about it just for a moment. The beauty of the microline is that as a normal stylus wears, it gets flat spots on the sides of the diamond that touch the groove wall, and that's a problem because as these flats start to get wider and wider and wider, they actually chop up your vinyl, and especially the high frequencies. And I'll give you a drawing that'll, in a moment that will sort of give you some idea about that. The beauty of the microline was that, and it was a very clever invention, the beauty of the microline was that it had extensions, which you can see here. And during the life of the diamond, these extensions would wear down, but they'd not change their sharpness. Well, what happened, however, is you continued to use the diamond and you got down into the base material, you would suddenly go from a uh, fine line diamond to a very, very flat, wide surface, like a completely worn out stylus. So the beauty of it is that it retained its uh, radius or its sharpness against the groove wall all the way through its life, but then when its life was over, that happened very suddenly and quickly. A good thing? Maybe. I mean, if you caught it before it damaged your records, fine. Or if you only damaged part of one record, if you're real lucky, fine. It's something you have to keep track of, and most people don't either know what they're looking for or have the proper equipment, or, or of course, nowadays a little easier with USB microscope. But if you have a fine line uh, of this design, the micro line, you want to keep an eye on it. You want to make sure you don't go over the number of appropriate hours. 